Hey, this is Bill Gladwell, and welcome to episode number eight of the Hey Look at Me podcast. In this episode, I sit down with comedian Nathan Timmel. Nathan is a world-traveling comedian, having visited numerous countries such as Iraq, Afghanistan, and Japan in support of American troops. He has recorded two CDs, receives regular airplay on Sirius XM satellite radio on the Raw Dog Comedy Channel, and has appeared on the nationally syndicated Bob and Tom Show. Nathan and I talk about crowd work, handling hecklers, audience etiquette, drunk comedians, taking tips, advice from newbies, reality television, and scripting. If you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, you can subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher, and when you do, leave a five-star review, and I would really appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter, at Bill Gladwell, and you can jump on my website with any questions or comments at BillGladwellLive.com. So enjoy episode eight of the Hey Look at Me podcast. Good, we, uh, we go until we're done. Uh, so sometimes it's 35 minutes, sometimes it's an hour. It depends on how it goes. Uh, so uh, the po- name of the podcast, by the way, is Hey Look at Me. So if you want to download it off of iTunes or Stitcher, you can download it off of that. And uh, I started about five weeks ago, maybe. I mean, we, we started recording before that, but we started putting them out after we had about four or five people in the bank, So we, uh, in case we missed a week. Gosh. So this week, I should say, we got Nathan Timmel. And uh, we just got done with our set. And this is the first time that we've done it live. We've always done it uh, before a show, one of the nights. And so it's just uh, me and the comedians sitting across from the table from each other. And I, so I thought we'd try it live and see how it went. And we have uh, people here staring at us, wondering if this is going to be amusing or if they're, they've got... This one girl has a look on her face like, oh, shit, we should have left. We, sh- we should have gone. <laughs> <laughs> how do we get it? Now no, she no, needs a trapped. cigarette is what she said. <laughs> oh, a cigarette. Oh, they went and they did their smoking. I saw that. <laughs> Oh, they're negotiating now. It's like a women's prison. So you should tell them it's veterinary. Uh, it's a veterinary. It is. So <laughs> yeah. apparently they're dealing cigarettes across the... the it's all vets. Uh, or veterinary assistants. What, what do you do? Assistant? We're both in school. In school now. I used to train a lot of vet students um, at the Ohio... It's the, the Ohio State University. And the reason is because uh, I also do hypnosis, and so you have to take a test to even get into the higher levels of the vet school, right? Yeah, and, and a lot of people couldn't. <laughs> they knew their stuff, and they just couldn't pass the test, so I helped them pass the test. But, yeah, I know how that goes, and a lot of people get stressed out in there. You, say you, have to, you, help, you didn't say you helped them cheat. You helped them pass. No, I helped them okay. pass. Ha, yeah, now, more she just relaxed. said that she did not have to take a test to get into the, her school. What does that say about your school? You did or didn't? I, I did other interviews, but Georgia, where I'm at, doesn't interview. Oh, good. oh okay. So if you want to go to Georgia accredited? School, yes. <laughs> Are you going to yeah. get a degree? Like, yeah, thank you. Because I honestly, I was just reading about uh, pilots in India. They have air schools in India where they basically take the money and issue a pilot license, and they're uncovering that have a ton of pilots that have no experience. And I think as she said, a- she's attending a school where you, uh, that was the first thing I thought of is, you're going to kill an animal. It's going to be very sad. Someone's fluffy. Recommendation, and they interview our recommenders. Okay. So they don't interview us, they talk to them so that they'll... So how do we know that you didn't pay off the recommender? Like, here, say nice things about me. Uh How do we know I didn't pay off the interviewer? You can be uh, you can be anything you want to be in India, it sounds like. Uh, uh, You're the vet now, right? I had a friend... You're a vet too? (laughs) Yes, and you're a vet too, that's right. He didn't even acknowledge you. I... I have a friend that's a vet, and he uh, studied, he's from Puerto Rico, and he studied in Cuba. Really? Yeah, he got his, his license and everything and, and practiced for one year in Cuba, came over, I think it was one year, but came over to the United States, and they didn't recognize the degree he got from Cuba. He had to go through the entire vet school again in order to uh, practice here. It was uh, crazy. He should have gone to the vet school in Grenada. Hey, 1980s reference. Can I, can I You're in Grenada? How, how is it? Well, is it really? thank Ronald Reagan for that. Where, hey, six-day war. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm from Fort she better say oh, we're the. It's a nice little yeah. island, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna do the. We're, we're in the podcast now, so we got Nathan Timmel. Oh, I thought that was all podcast. Well, it is. It is. But I'm bringing the audience back in, so we got Nathan Timmel, and uh, this podcast is "Hey, Look at Me" because most comedic comics, and uh, I, I would consider my, my. I'm not a comic, but my uh, influences have always been stand up because I do corporate work, and when I travel around to different cities, I would usually end up in a comedy club after I got done with my work, watching, not performing, and uh, I have always liked stand-up no matter where it was at and so i put together this podcast because when i first started i'm from lima and i had no mentors at all because it was such a small town and i was on my own so i kind of put it together and, and there were some things that could have been shortcutted quite a bit 
So the Hey Look at Me podcast, the Hey Look at Me comes from issues that we have because there's something wrong with us that we have to get up in a one-man show and do stuff for you and, and say, hey, look at me up here on stage, right? I mean, yeah, well, usually I, I didn't talk about it tonight, but I have jokes about it a little bit. I'm not going to do jokes right now, but basically I moved 10 times before I was 10 years old. And uh, when I turned 10 or whatever it is, I got to seventh grade, rep- I, some, I, uh, my, my, both my parents have said that something in me snapped, that I went from being a happy, sort of like, oh, lucky, and I finally realized, like, oh, guess what? You make friends only to lose them, so I'm just going to stop making friends. And so that was my childhood, and then somehow I turned into comedy for a means of attention. And the joke I do do on stage is the laughter is the hugs I never got as a child because my parents fought, and we moved, and there you go. That's a quick summation of my They're not story. Even, the girls are just feeling sorry for you now. Look. <laughs> it's funny. Well, you heard the joke on Wednesday. Yes, I did. I did the joke on Wednesday, and it usually gets this laugh where I talk, and the whole audience just went, aww. And I'm like, well, that's awkward because usually it's a laugh, but I just got sympathy. Okay. That, <laughs> I didn't expect that. Yeah. So this podcast is for uh, other comics that aren't veterans yet and uh, for other variety artists. And a variety of artists would be like me. I'm a thought reader or a magician or a juggler or anybody that performs on stage. So... It's more for them about how how to shortcut things and how do they get you know maybe just uh, support if other what other people have gone through. So uh, how how did you find out that you wanted to be a comedian? I mean, when did you make that decision that a comedian is is the title that you wanted to give yourself? Right after college. It's a convoluted story that's probably not interesting if it goes on too long. So the truncated version is. Um, I love stand. I love the unknown comic in the 1970s when I was a really young child. He's still around. He is. Well, he's not unknown anymore, well, but yeah, he's still yeah, around. Exactly. Do you guys know who he is? The Gong Show. The Gong Show. You, you remember with the, the bag on his head? Yeah, the bag on his yep. head. Right. And so I was at summer camp in Interlock in Michigan, and uh, I did a show as the unknown comic. I just told jokes about uh, the camp counselors and the bad food, but I put a bag on my head because I didn't know anything about hack or stealing, or you know, I, you know, I didn't <laughs> know that it was inappropriate to take someone else's identity because I was six. Um, and then that went away. I, I continued to watch uh, comedians. I saw Richard Pryor live on the Sunset Strip when I was 10. I, had, I owned George Carlin's uh, Class Clown when I was six or seven years old. Um, if you are not familiar with that album, is this uh, podcast, can this be R-rated? It is R-rated, Okay. Yes. Yep. So Class Clown has the seven dirty words you can't say on television. So I was walking around at six years old saying, shit, piss, fuck, nut, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. And... <laughs> I got disinvited from a lot of households for that because I, I just thought that was the greatest thing. Cause, uh, at, at 10? No birthday yeah. Parties. Uh, what's that? No birthday, no birthday parties. No birthday parties. <laughs> and I didn't know what George Carlin, I stumbled into this. The cover of Class Clown has George Carlin picking his nose on it or pretending to he has a nose. And I just thought, saw that and I'm like, that's funny. I pick my nose. Picking your nose is funny. And so I got this album and the next thing you know, shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. I'm like, whoa, mind, mind, I'm blown. Just... And so I, I liked comedy from a young age, and then I got into girls and music, and I was in a band in college, and the, here's the this, this short version, is, is the band broke up, and I played bass, and I went to Berkeley College of Music, but I'm like, okay, I'm not Sting, I can't sing and write songs and play bass, and so I remembered comedy, and I said, well, I'll still play around on the bass, but I can't be a solo musician, and bands, all they do is fight, I want to do something alone, oh, so I went to an open microphone, and I had a lot of fun, it was a flashback to childhood, and that was it. That was uh, it. Was like I had nothing wow. better to do. I wanted to be, still wanted to be an artist and express myself. But like I said, I knew I wasn't Sting. So the first open mic had you. Uh, the first. Uh, this is you talk to a lot of comics that say that they tanked and they bombed and they they, they got back. The first open mic I was ever on, I destroyed. I did so well, and I'm like, I can do this. And then like the next five were just horrible in silence. And I'm like, what happened? I thought I was good, but then you get better. But it was just that that opening moment was so egotistical. Like, yeah, I'm so good. They loved me. Then the following open microphone, nope, nope. You got to put your time in <laughs> and learn this. Yeah. My nephew is how old now? Nine or ten? I can't remember. Nine, yeah, he's going to be down here Sunday. They're coming from Ohio to visit. And ever since he's been three, he uh, wanted to be a comic. And you're going to talk him out of it? Well, he changed his <laughs> mind two years ago. He now wants to be a strip club owner. Oh, well, there's nothing wrong with yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> and he does. He likes and he's nine, and he's got it worked out. His, he wants to call his strip club um, Dip and Strip because he wants to serve ice cream at the place. Hey. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> Can't be any worse than anything else they serve. No. There's a strip club in Milwaukee uh, that has a comedy club in the basement, and my favorite thing about it is uh, when you drive up, the ad on top literally says free Wi-Fi. 
That's their selling point. Not boobies or all nude or the dancers, but yeah, free Wi-Fi. Come on in and play around on Facebook and don't look at the dancers. I just, I, like, that's, I don't, I don't know how you're marketing it, but free Wi-Fi apparently is good. They, they weighed all their options and went, this is the selling point right here. Free Wi-Fi at the strip club. <laughs> do, uh, do you, you have brothers and sisters? I have one sister, yes. Are you the youngest or oldest? I'm the older. Which is weird. So am I. But usually the youngest are the ones that want to star compete for attention. For attention. Yeah. They're star for attention, and uh, they're the comics. A lot of comics are uh, the young youngest born. How long is there between you and the Five sister? years. Yeah, so she's almost a firstborn, but she's the firstborn girl, so that would... Yeah. She probably isn't star for attention either. No. Nope. No. So you did your first open mic and uh, didn't go so... Well, it went well, but the rest of them yeah. after that, five after that, didn't go well. <laughs> it was just nothing. So when did you first get paid? I don't remember when I first got paid, but I can tell you the club was uh, Stooges in Milwaukee. It's gone now, but I uh, did that thing where I went to Stooges every weekend just to piss off the headliners by talking to them, just to be that guy like, hey, 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 I want to do this. I want to start being a comedian. What can you tell me? And I would watch them and and I would listen to them and they would talk, and they were very kind and they you know and I just learned. Uh, what style of comedy I liked, which you just saw storytelling, talking about my life, not really jokes, because um, I felt like I got to know the comedians by watching them, and if, I, if someone just told jokes, I'd feel it was more like Chinese food. I could enjoy it, but then they were gone. I wouldn't remember anything like, wait, what was there? But at least, you know, if they talked about their family, their life, or you know, I like that. And so the owner saw me hanging out every weekend, and after several months said, you, you know, you're going to go up, and uh, you're going to host. And I'm like, I am? And she's like, yep. And so I did, and that was my first weekend. And yeah, nice. That was, that was my first. She just saw me being there and being studious, and I remember because it's not like I leapfrogged over a couple other Milwaukee comics, but they weren't at the club. They would just call her like, "Hey, I want to host the show," and she'd say, "Nope." And because I was in her face all the time, not begging her, just like putting in the time and showing that I was interested, she saw that as like, "Okay, he's serious. I'm going to put him up, even though these other guys they just call. They go out drinking and do whatever." So yeah, you spend your time drinking. This guy actually wants to do it what time are we uh looking at here i mean what about what year oh god i don't know i once it's last year it's gone like i don't know how long i've been married i, I don't know if it's five years or four or That's seven yeah you well, shouldn't say that on the podcast <laughs> no my wife knows my, my wife got mad at me two weeks ago because i didn't know the color of our house like I'm, I know where it is. I know which house to walk into but she said something about myself I, I, I don't pay attention like well she's used to it like i I say my daughter's two and a half, and I'm pretty sure that's right. But she might be like I know <laughs> dates. Wrong, I just don't know years. That's my hope. I don't know years. So so is this 80s? Yeah, no, this is 90s. This 90s. Is 90s. Well, even yeah. in the 90s, though, if you, anybody ever been to an open mic? Now the open mics were different back in the 80s and 90s. Uh, you you actually had to. Uh, I don't. Did you have an audition or just stand in line or? And just a sign up a week sign before. Up. Like, uh, you and you just, may or may not get on. Yeah, you didn't just show up and go up on stage. You had to show up, uh, kind of like how I got the first gig, is you signed up for the following week to show, like, you know, we're not just putting anybody up, and then they talk to you about it, and then you try it. And, and it really, it was also, how, what's the furthest you drove for an open mic? Oh, I think not far, maybe two hours once, a okay. couple times. That's times. not bad. Yeah, I mean, not... I've heard people driving six hours for an open mic. Yeah, I never did that. Just, you know, we... we Matt, I, I started in Milwaukee, I said, and Madison is roughly an hour away. So every week we'd go to Madison because they had two comedy clubs. Each had an open mic on a Wednesday. So every week we would drive to Madison and do one of the other two clubs. So we would do comedy on Wednesday in Madison, Thursday at the Safe House in Milwaukee, and Friday, Saturday we'd hang out at Stooges in Milwaukee to try and get up. And then every so often someone would try a Tuesday open mic that would fail. But we'd go there when it was open. Uh, nice. They'd try and do comedy as much as possible just to, just to do it. And the open mics... You, you don't do open mics now, right? Uh, I still go down do you, in Cedar Rapids. They're if different, I'm around, though. Uh, yeah. Some of the clubs, like Funny Bone, for example, yeah. in their circuit, they have, uh, they I don't know what they call them. You have to buy in. Yeah, so bringer you, shows. You, yeah, bringer, bringer shows. shows. You bring like five or seven friends. They pay like five bucks, and then they'll get you on stage. So yeah, I don't do those. I just We have a good one in Cedar Rapids, and I just like hang, like learning about the local scene. So I go hang out with the, the local comics, and then they treat me like I treat They ask me questions like, I met this guy. Only once, and I saw him do three minutes, and after the show, he came up to me, he's like, so where should I move, New York or Los Angeles? I'm like, I'm not prepared to answer that. I don't know. You're like, go live your own <laughs> life. I can't determine your career for you off a three-minute set. Idaho. You should move yeah. to Idaho. So uh, you, you did the open mics, and you still do the open mics. Uh, yeah, I go down. Like I said, I've met a lot of the young comics in Iowa, and I like hanging out with them. And, and Okay, young comics then. 
no matter where you're at, young comics, how have they changed since you started? Because Ooh, well, I know with my profession, <laughs> they, they're on the they they put something on YouTube, people see it and they get a lot of likes maybe, yeah. and then they want to get on TV right away. Well, and they want to be a headliner right away. Yeah. Like I, I saw uh, not not with Facebook. There are all these uh, social groups that discuss comedy, and uh, I'll say this on the podcast because I've told them this in person uh, to people I know and, and like friends. They think they have more material than they have. Like they've been doing it six months, and they're like, "Oh, I can be on stage forty minutes." I'm like, no, you can't. You really, can't. you know, you do not have as much material as you think. Because I, I took a really nice guy. Uh, I, I got a gig at a casino, and I said, "Hey, you want to come just do five minutes to get in front of a real audience?" Because he's only been in front of open mic audience. He said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And on the way there, he's talking like, "Oh, I did the show where I was able to do twenty minutes. It was so great." And I did that. I'm like, "Really? You did twenty? And he, and he got to think. He had to keep looking at his notes for five minutes. He would like tell a joke and get nervous and walk over and look at his notes. I'm like, "So you don't have twenty minutes because you just didn't do five clear. You didn't do five clean minutes." And that's I think new comics like you just said they put something on YouTube and suddenly they can get and they think, "Wow, you know, it's like me after my first show. I can do this. I should be on TV with this set. I should be headlining. I should be, you know, I should be getting paid. I should be traveling the country." And it's like. No, you 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 do open mics in front of your buddies and you make one another laugh, but it doesn't mean you've earned anything. No, no, and a lot of them do crowd work. Yeah, uh, new new comics do crowd. Do you guys know what crowd work is? We did a little of that when when I would talk to you and do a little asides, like it, it, it weaves in and out of the material. Uh, you know, you did some too. Well, you're yeah, but you know, it's a, this is a crafted act that's meant to look. You know, like free flowing, but he, he yes. knows exactly what he's doing at every moment, and so you're saying something and it's flowing. And I I would go in and out of the audience, but that's crowd work is when we talk to you and get an answer and then make a joke off it or riff off it. What do you mean? How how what would... people are talking to you? Uh, Does it affect you? You're like smart as like me. Well, it depends Her. on if it gets if it's drunk and out of control, like when she got thrown out of the show. You know, if it's just like blathering. If we not instigate, this show. yeah, not yeah this we show. got thrown after the show. Oh, oh got, got it. it. We drank too much after the show. <laughs> if 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 I instigate the conversation, then I'm in control because I know where it's going, and I can generally like okay, move away. But when you have someone that just wants to interject and and heckle and just yell random, that that's annoying, and then we sort of. Either make a snide remark or just, you know, like, hey, can we, you know, the comedy clubs can be good about removing people. Like, look, you, if you're going to be this way belligerent, you got to go. And some comedians, that's their gig. That's the whole I thing. Mean, they do you crowd come work. Up with some, when you're going after somebody, do you get offended by offending somebody or do you, get, I mean, do you go after It's, it, well, here's the thing. It's a delicate balance. Yeah, it is. Goodness. Because here's the thing with the, uh, with the crowd, and I, I'll let you give your answer too. When you're doing crowd, if you're getting a heckler, for example, at some point it's it's funny, and you can have some banter back and forth with that person. And if you can keep it under control, you can make that you can turn that situation into a good situation and make it funny well, and play off of them. It's just like us; we get questioned all the time. Y'all get up there and y'all are trying to communicate with people. What's y'all's hardest thing to, to make funny? That I'm an asshole. And I'm trying to goddamn yes gotcha. pick pick on y'all. Yeah, and oh. so and, and and so we we can try to make it funny. However, there's a point you don't want to bash the person because the rest of the audience sees that at first. But there's a point that everything switches, okay. and the point that it switches is when the rest of the audience is on your side because the person is uh, more annoying than and they want to see the rest of the show or the comic on stage. <laughs> so the audience will give you a little bit more leeway to get the person under control. But what do you, what do you think about well, that? I, I actually have a, a good story involving that that I can try and tell very yeah, quickly. So I'm, I'm starting out, and we're just, you, generally a comedy show is three people, host, middle, headliner. And uh, Buddy and I are just starting to host shows. And we're going to a club that's like two hours away, and he, he's got a real job, so he needs to be back. It's Wednesday through Saturday, this club. So he's got to drive up and back Wednesday, up and back Thursday, and then he can take the hotel Friday and Saturday. But So he asked me if I wanted to tag along Wednesday night just to keep him company in the car. And I said, sure. So we go up, and uh, this is beautiful woman right in the front row. And he walks on stage to start the show, and she starts in on him. And he doesn't know what to do because we're starting comics, we're new, and so she just eats him alive. Well, and then what happened is the feature comic came up, and she went after him, and the headliner went up, and she went after him, and the club didn't do anything. So I'm in the back of the room, and I, oh, I skipped this part, it's right, I'm actually at the club uh, the very next week or two weeks or something like that, I'm hosting. So I make mental note of this woman, and I'm like, 
if for any reason she is in my audience, I am going to kick the crap out of her. And uh, so I show up the very, and she even badgered him after the show. She walks up to my friend like, I was funnier than you. I was funnier. She thought she was helping or something like that. So either way, I memorized her. So I go, the, the very next week, I'm there hosting, and I go up to start the show, and hand to God true, she is right in the same place. And I'm like, are you kidding? Who goes to a comedy club two weeks in a row? I said, but the show starts, and she, I don't know what she said, but she started right in on me. And so I just went, why are you even talking? What's wrong with you? Aren't you happy to get a date out tonight? Don't they usually just rent you and take you back to the hotel room, you whore? The whole... Yeah, you're giving me a thumbs up right now. The audience didn't have the backstory. They shut down and hated me. They didn't know that last week she did it through the whole show and that she ruined everything. They just saw me jump on her. And they, they were just like... And I'm sitting there like... But I got her. I did a good job, and it took me a while to realize that they turned they on you. Yeah, they turned. They, they yeah. thought I was too harsh. Right. Yeah, there's a balance there, and I do but have. This is this is the best oh, yeah. part of the story. Is again so true. I could not make this up. After the show, I'm feeling horrible because I tanked because like my first thing was slamming a woman in the audience. So uh, the show is ending, and everybody's filing out, and people are walking by, and I see her walking. I'm like, oh god, I don't want to see her. She walks up. She's fuming, mad, and she says to her friend. She says, I can't believe this. This was the worst night of my life. The comic makes fun of my job, and the cop that put me in jail for it was sitting two tables away. This is bullshit. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, my God! I called it. She was, and she was one of those back pages escorts. And I'm like, I nailed it. And I was just trying to pay. So that, it had a happy ending. Mentalist. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Something. But see, I liked what you did. Yeah, and, well, and that's kind of, that's kind I of thought that, that, that could go way. either way. Yeah. Yeah. He sort of, of got grumpy for a second. I'm like, ooh. This... On you. And when you said yeah. that, I went, ooh, how's this going to go? Because, you know, well, some people are really. Yeah. You know, I used to ask for volunteers in my show. Um, but you, I, you, sometimes you get people that over, they over, they want to volunteer more than they should. So they uh, want to get up here that every time. Right. Yeah. And they're jumping up and down. And then other people that don't volunteer that I think will be good on stage because the people that don't volunteer, are the ones I probably want on stage because they're the ones that are a little uncomfortable up here. They're not used to be in front of people. They don't want to be the star of the show. They just want to come up and help. So when that tonight when that guy said, no, no, I want, I want to pass. Um, here, here's the thing. Anything that I say, and I'm sure Nathan has the same thing, I've heard it before. There's, you, there's probably not anything that an audience member can tell me at this point after 26 years that I have not heard. He wasn't upset. He just said, no, I, I, want, I want to pass. And I said, you don't have a choice. I would have pushed it a little bit more. You don't want to push it too much because then, again, the audience turns on you because now you're being an asshole. And so I, if he would have said, no, I, I'm not coming up, and his wife was sitting next to him, I said, listen, you brought him. And then I would have went to the next person, and I would have made a joke out of it and went to the okay. next person. And, and she probably would have made a comment. For what I do, it's different than a comic because I need to be in control of everybody in the room and especially everybody on my stage because of what I do. Uh, I have to be the boss. Uh, because I don't mean, a lot of people think, oh, did you talk to him before? Because I'm telling people their first kiss. And the dog that they had, you know, 40 years ago. And I need to be in control of everybody I have up here because I need to get that information from them somehow. And if I'm not in control, then it all just falls apart. So, uh, but how do you know when it's when you've pushed it? And then we'll get over to you. How do you know when you've pushed it? I, I just generally try not to. It's like okay. I, I, my my act isn't about going after people. And if someone is drunk and heckling, I'll give them a couple, of shots, and then I try and let the staff handle it. And if they don't, yeah. then I then I will actually push it too far just to get them gone. But I generally don't try and push people. It's not in my nature okay. to pick. Which could vote. be the there's the comics out there though, uh, Stanhope. Yeah, yeah. Who, Doug. Yeah, yeah. Doug. He'll tell you before he gets on stage, as he's walking out, he'll say, "I'm going to walk four people tonight, or I'm going to walk eight people." Well, tonight. he says, uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 "My act is like going to war. You're all not going to be here at the end." Yeah, and it's kind of like yeah. playing <laughs> baseball. Yeah. You let your outfield take care of him. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, and the clubs that hire him know that. And I, I, I love him, but yeah. some people he's not. Some people's cup of tea. No, you, you were like, like real nice. <laughs> You're raising your hand. What's your name? Chelsea. Chelsea. All right, Chelsea. What do you have? <laughs> knows someone in the audience gets heckled like where do you assume the point that like you should know what you're getting into coming to see a stand-up i i you guess i'm I mean? confused like, like should, the, the, someone in the audience knows that the comedian might go that, after yes. them or do something um, and you don't I mean, you those people like, generally <laughs> try 
Uh, no, I was just gesturing in general. Um, I mean, those people generally, you'll hear them at the door. They'll say, I, I want to sit in back. No. They try not to sit in front. A lot of people, the people that are shy that don't want to get picked on, you'll hear them ask, can I sit in back? I don't want to sit close to the sage. Uh, you had someone, didn't someone tonight say that to you? That they? Yeah, well, yeah, I don't, I don't give them a choice either. People, I, I tell them. I mean, I'm honest with people. They say, well, no, no, well, you'd like to sit in back. I said, I don't, you're going to get picked on anywhere. So it really doesn't yeah. matter. Is what I Because I, I pick on them, but it's not a bad pick on now. If you want to go... Um, you to did s- tell me that tonight. I, that was you. You picked on me when I walked outside, and we hadn't even been up You here. weren't outside. This is your wife? Girlfriend? Yes. Wife? I was outside. She was outside, girlfriend. and it was like she was in, in time out. She was facing a bush with a cigarette, facing the building, and I walked past her because I had to go to the car for something. Yeah. I said, did somebody put you in time out? So, and I didn't know you were coming to the club. He but... just saw her in the bathroom, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we met. <laughs> You know, the thing is, because before I got here and, and I run the club now, uh, my show was serious. I, I did a serious mind-reading show uh, in a theater. And so that gave me a little bit of a different perspective on people because people would come, and they were coming to see not a comedy show they or a comedy club. They were coming to a theater for a theatrical production is what they were coming for. And I, I was surprised at how many people do not understand the etiquette of a theater. I mean, phones are going off. Yeah. They're talking really loud with each other, and they're doing all this stuff. And people don't. You, to answer your question, people don't know. They come to a comedy club. They don't know how to act. I well, mean, you you people, said it when you got on stage. I didn't notice it uh, because you were so. You said uh, when you were, when you was drunk, people said uh, you in the white who was texting during the comedian. Yeah, and I didn't see it. But they just said they just feel like I call people out. You know. Yeah, and during my show, like, I, I heard uh, your phone ring, and I'm like, you know what? Sometimes I'll acknowledge it and, and make a comment, like turn that goddamn thing off. But you know, I just, I'm like, kids. people. Oh, was that your? It's kids. It's kids. Oh, T Wayne. <laughs> what you guys thought when you go see a comedist and they get totally drunk on stage and they lose things and they have to? Oh, I'll let you take this. Oh, I got. It's just. It's so. To me, that's just no, disrespectful to the. There, there are comics right that get drunk and. Who would you see? Ralphie. Ralphie. Made these oh, yeah, I know Ralphie. Yeah. I, I mean, to me, I, I don't, I, I understand comics that have a beer or two on stage, and there's nothing, but I, to me personally, not picking on any specific comic, I just think it's disrespectful. The audience shows up. Uh, you have to give them the benefit of the doubt. Like you say, there are one or two that might be rude or yell, but for the most part, you came out tonight because you wanted to have fun, you wanted to laugh, you wanted to see something different, and... As much as this is fun, this is also my job. This is his job. This is our job to to entertain you, not in a like you know dancing monkey kind of way. Like, hey, you know, marionette, you control us. But it's it's an equal contract. You come out because you want to have a good time. We promise to give that to you, and let's just meet in the center and everybody else. So I, I find comics that get drunk or uh, don't take the audience seriously or treat it seriously. I find them very disrespectful. I see comics that do insult humor and, and you say, what's too far? Let's we'll go at the audience. And not, and I, I don't personally understand it. I, I wouldn't pay to go see it. And, you know, and why do you guys not take tips? tips. I didn't say I didn't take tips. No, y'all, no y'all go ahead. Throw them up. I mean, <laughs> No, you, you bought a shirt from me. That, that my, like everybody else does. He just did, 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 did it like this. My, <laughs> merchan, my merchandise table is my tip bucket. You buy why something you from not, me. That's I my, mean, why do you guys it's not just not, it's not, uh, it's not something you do. I mean, uh, in, a, in a comedy show or yeah. a, even theatrical show, it's just... However, people do hand me tips on their way out the door. Okay. I've made as much as $150 in one night. People hand me tips. Okay. And they, they usually fold them up, shake my hand, and it's like... You know, a maitre d' or something. They put it in the is palm of my hand. I just put it in my is pocket. It well, it's it's, it's, it's like that's also right? because he's yeah. in their yeah. head. <laughs> <laughs> he's also they getting tips because he's controlling their mind. Yeah, you right. leave tips after the show. Now, have you gotten tips before? Money. Uh not often, but I sell I mean, products. Have, so yeah. people, yeah. I've had people walk by my you merchandise. It's my wife right back there. Yep. I, people will walk by my table and literally say, "I don't want to buy something, but here's ten bucks," and I'm like, "All right, cool, thanks." You know, like, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm not opposed to taking tips. If you want to give us a tip after we get done with the podcast, well, I mean, feel free to. So. I mean, that's what I'm questioning. Why don't y'all have Why don't y'all, you know, I mean, that's the question. Yeah. At T. Wayne, to answer your question, I just heard today from somebody, and I won't say who. There is a bigger name that uh, had to be pulled from some shows for the same thing. So, yeah, so we won't, won't say any names. I've talked about Tom him. Tom Arnold? Yes, I've yeah, talked about him in a past, a past uh, podcast, but... 
And I think a lot of the famous people, which Ralphie kind of would have fell into that because he, he got some fame <coughs> on the last comic standing, not a whole lot, but it's a reality show. But uh, people like Tom Arnold and uh, you have some other ones that are out, they, they rely on their fame. People will come and fill the room just because they've been in movies and TV. So. I've experienced that. Why where, do you do so much of the mind right Why do I? Because he's that's, good that's at it. That's my job. That's, that's what job. I do. I don't, I don't do stand-up. I have the, uh, the thought reading show, so... Yeah, but you said you experienced that. Yeah, I just, uh, it was uh, uh, very nice when Brett Butler, right off uh, Grace oh, Under yeah. Fire fame, she was very nice. I have nothing negative to say about her, but she was packing the room, and, and I was watching it, and I'm just like, if, if you weren't famous, like, because the audience, they didn't dislike it. They just sort of sat there like, okay, you know, like, we're seeing someone famous. It was in the Midwest, and, you know, you could take that L.A. Hollywood fame to the Midwest, and be like, oh, my God, someone famous, but... She wasn't killing it. People, you know, were sort of like walking and going, really? That was, we paid all that money for someone famous, and it just wasn't all that. Yeah. Yeah, they fill the room just to see that. And they get the autographs afterwards. They'll sign yeah. autographs. And, um, That's what, uh, we can make fun of him, uh, Dustin Diamond. I have never. Oh, is he ever, out of jail? Uh, and that's the same. You know who Dustin Diamond is? Screech. Screech. Yeah. Screech. Yes. So he's gonna. He, he gets arrested. He's just gonna use that as, as part of his act. He's. That's gonna get him hired more. Is yeah. But I've. I and I have never met him. But I from. Screech. Screech, I've never Saved him. by the Bell. Yes. 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 I mean, I've never met him. Maybe I've never worked with him. Old. But I've never heard a good thing about him from either comics no, or maybe. audiences. I've never heard a good thing as a person or an act or maybe anything. So. Now, uh, John Mayer. John Mayer, he's a singer. He will do open mic nights. And he will... Uh, yeah, and, and he fills the place. But he is not... He's not a stand-up. I mean, he's humorous. But he's not yeah. a stand-up. But he will still fill the place because it's just... John so Mayer. do you guys yeah. have other jobs other than this, or just this is it? No, this I mean, is it. This is it. This is, this is all, yep. This is what you do. You guys, we live off your tips, so any tips you want to give us afterwards? <laughs> 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 I'm just <asking> <laughs> You brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> you better tip them. <laughs> Chelsea? Yes. Um, okay, so do you, you talk about seeing other people's shows. Like, is it a conflict of interest to go see another person's show? <laughs> Or do you feel threat? You know, threatened by them, or do you enjoy? Now, now, see, I can see other comics. I'm going to let Nathan take this one because I can. I'm not a comic. I'm not a stand up. So I love stand up comedy. I'm a fan of that. Uh, I can go and see. I, I will tell you that I have seen. When I started my mentalism show, because what I do is considered mentalism. Um, I had never seen another mentalist except for one on TV one time. So my show I put together. And so after I got into the profession, because I was a stage comedy hypnotist for 23 years. So I, I did corporate work with that in colleges and stuff. And I just didn't want to do it anymore. So I put together this mind reading show. So after I got into that, you know, kind of line of work, uh, doing the mentalism show instead of the hypnosis, I uh, started going to mentalism performances and they suck. They are... Have you ever been to one? Mm -mm, they I'm are horrible. Most of them don't give a uh, disclaimer. They'll, they'll say that they're mind readers, and that's what they play on stage. And it's boring. It's really boring. It's kind of like you said, the magician that has no girlfriend, because that's what they do. You're like, I am serious in doing this. And that's why I said you're going to have yes. it, because he plays it very fun, very loose, yeah. casual, and it's very enjoyable. And as I said up front, I want to do it very good. Like I said, you're going to be freaked out. And how many of you were freaked out? Really, oh. just two, three, and you, you were right dog. on board the entire time? The, yeah, um, the dog and yeah. the boyfriend. Yeah. I've seen his wife. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, what do y'all do? Well, I wanted Nathan to answer that, though. You go to, you see, yeah. well, he sees other comics all the time because yeah. he, they got openers right. and features, and, and he's always in a comedy club, so yeah. you tell him. So, I, what was the question again? Like, do I feel threatened, well, like or is it conflict of interest? Could you accidentally pick up some of their fit, or do you? Oh, like, people get people you talk know? about that. Yeah, I, I, I've heard. Uh, uh, yeah, no, that's that's intentional. <laughs> it's, it is, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, Pat Oswald has talked about uh, accidentally absorbing a bit, and then someone would say it, and he's like, "I thought I thought of that tag," you know, yeah. like, and then he you immediately drop it. Um, yeah, no, I don't think it's. I I watch when I go to a comedy show uh, just to make sure I'm not stepping on toes, and or um, especially when I'm headlining a club. I watch the first two comics because I don't want to go up and, like, ask the same question or do a similar bit, um, something like that. Like, I've seen other comics, like, when I was back in the day when I was hosting, I'd go up and, like, hey, is anybody having a birthday? So, oh, you, you have a birthday, good for you, a round of applause. And the future will go up, oh, I have a birthday, oh, it's your birthday. And then the headliner goes up, like, oh, does anybody have a birthday? And you're like, the audience is like, what the fuck, we've done this three times. So I pay attention <laughs> just off on that. I don't want to be redundant. Or if someone does a joke about 
fuck, ceiling fans. I don't want to go up and do my joke about <laughs> ceiling fans. I'll just change course. Like, all right, ceiling fans has been done. Let's do something different. But so where do y'all go? Just where tourists go, or where? where I, I did corporate. I did corporate work for a long time, and corporate and colleges, um, but mainly corporate work. So corporations will hire me out for sales meetings, for example, and they have entertainment at night. And uh, I, I, my degrees are in business, so I also do like sales training. So I'll speak during the day, and then I'll do my performance at night. Now, now I don't. I mean, I will if they pay me enough. I will still go, and they pay for my airfare and everything. I still go, but now I'm here. This is the only place I perform. Uh, but in like August 19th, I have to be up in Indianapolis for a uh, real estate company that's having a meeting to perform for them, and they paid me enough. So they're, I'm going up there and flying up there and and then flying back and doing a show that night. And then he, he you go all over the place. I'll so, go right? whoever hires me. So, yeah, wherever. I mean, comedy clubs, I'm you lost. do corporate work too? Yeah. Yeah, so corporate work, comedy clubs, and um, so anybody that will pay. So how does this place do during... Y'all have an off season? Ah, uh, yeah, know. we do have an off season here in, on Hilton Head Island. We uh, the off season, uh, the season is from uh, Memorial Day to Labor Day. That's the season. So after that, you have an off season. I can still pull locals in uh, here, but I I, I have uh, not as right now. I'm on stage seven nights a week. Um, I won't be on stage seven nights a week. I'll be on stage about three nights a week. So I have four nights that I can go other places. And uh, but my my so show y'all get vacation basically is. Now, vacation, vacation for us is uh, well. A vacation for me is is unemployment. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, now I'm going with you. A vacation <laughs> is if I'm not if I'm on vacation, I'm not making money. So yeah, if I, uh, like I want to go to Key West and uh, with the family uh, sometime on our off season here, but I'm gonna f- try to find a gig down there that I can do a couple nights because yeah, that's gonna yeah. pay for the vacation. Yeah. So yeah, four, yeah, Whatever. four from eight to nineteen. Oh no, I don't have that many. No, no, no. The mine are way older now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh tips for uh if uh, here's my number one tip for um i have two number one tips i guess i give to anybody getting into this business whether it be and i and uh, uh comedians are, are variety it's a variety art yeah, yeah, yeah. and so in the into the variety art so a magician comedian juggler you know all that would be in variety a ventriloquist and um i i say number one boldness and what I mean that is most people that want to get into the business, and some of them are good, but they don't take any chances. They, they, they are not confident about themselves. They don't take any chances. And uh, if you don't take any chances, you're not going to get too far in this business. And the second one is persistence. If you don't have persistence, because um, you're going to get a lot of no's and a, a lot of people turning you down. And um, those are the two things that I say. If you can be bold and, and do things nobody else is doing and have persistence, and just stick with it, and and as, assuming that they're good or decent, uh, you'll you'll go, you, you'll make money at this. But w- for tips for comedians getting into the business, young people getting into the business, what would you say is some of the most important things? I'd like to give contradictory advice um, because I would say be yourself because it's easier to just be you on stage. Try and find who you are on stage and be comfortable with that. And then as I say that, adaptability. Because well, you know, I, maybe I, when I say boldness and uh, and persistence. I don't mean on stage. I mean behind the scenes in business. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That's business. I, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. Man, if I was doing that right, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd be a richer man. I, I know more about the craft than the business. I guess uh, persistence. If you want to, I don't know if this is the business aspect of it, but be able to face, like you said, rejection because yeah. you are going to get so much of it. I mean, in many different shapes, you're going to get rejections from. Uh, bookers you're, you're trying to contact from clubs you want to work rejection from audiences uh, we, t- we talked about this I, I had some uh, people didn't like me Wednesday night uh, they called and complained they said they didn't like my act I'm like alright well they, they didn't like me enough to call so I have to deal with that that I wasn't their cup of tea and you, you can, is the same person that's in that club every night waiting for their opportunity yeah, yeah. that's still persistence yeah 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 so uh, and, and uh, agents I, I I didn't have an agent for years. Everybody thinks it's easy though to get on TV and stuff anymore. Well, people ask that. I right? haven't had an agent for years, um, and agents they they tend not to pick you up until you don't need them anymore. Yep, is what it boils yep. down to. When you don't need them, is when they'll come and want to pick you up. Well, what's the old joke? Uh, managers, you know, like why does a manager take ten percent because he does ten percent of the work? Yeah, yeah. So and uh, TV, you know, I'm. I'm I'm constantly trying to do different things with TV, and now people will ask me at least once a night when when people are walking out the door after my show they'll say, "Oh, you need to be on America's Got Talent." No, I won't go on America's Got Talent now. 
Uh, and the reason is because when you start to move up and America's got talent, you have to sign a contract with them. If you get so far, you owe them money for so many years after that from whatever you do. And uh, well, it's like American Idol; they control everything. Like people yeah. think once you got an American Idol, you made it, but they give you like the winner. I think that's why they say Daughtry sort of botched his run so that he could get out and start his band. Yeah. Because if you ever watched the finale for a few years, they were saying, "All right, here are the two finalists are going to sing." Two, the two finalists are going to sing the exact same song to see that's going to be their first single, and sometimes the song would be horrible. But it's like this is you're going to you're we control you. You got into music to be an artist, but now we control your art. And it's the same thing with any television is they're going to take over and uh, like like uh, people always say, why aren't you on a uh, last comic standing? Same thing. And I I tried to get on same once, thing. and uh, it is what it is. And obviously I wasn't on, but I know a couple of people that did get on, and I they take the top ten. And they take them on tour for months and months. And, man, I looked at that and I'm like, the money would be great. And, and the job security would be great. But I would miss my family too much. I mean, it. I'm away from home three days a week and I hate it. Like, I, I have videos of my kids and I watch them. And we FaceTime on the phone and I love my kids. And even my, my son is, is, you know, coming up on one year. He doesn't know what a phone is. He just sort of sees me on the phone and smiles and giggles because he hears my voice. I cannot imagine being on tour for five months solid and never going home or going home one day a week. It just, it would kill me. This, you know. At the same time, if you can't get on those shows, even one episode is going to give you some credits. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. if you can get on one episode. You've you got to try and get known somehow, noticed. Uh, yeah. we got to fill the seats. That's mm-hmm. the only way we get paid. That's shrinking. As seen on are the three most important words in comedy. It has nothing to do with talent. It has, to do, no, it has nothing to do with how funny you are, how original you are. You could possibly end up seeing someone that has a great six-minute set, and he was on, say, Conan or Fallon or whatever, and that six minutes was fantastic, but they throw him on stage to do an hour or 45 minutes, and it's not good, and the audience is unhappy. But he, but he was on TV, so they threw him on stage and said, here's your TV guy. And audiences will say, well, he was on TV, so he must be good. But it was only that six minutes he was prepared for. And, you know, comics that have been doing it 10, 15, 20 years will lose work for people that have been doing it for two years. I The last comic standing, I don't know what it was. I don't, I don't even pay attention. There was a girl in there. She'd been doing comedy for three months, and she was like 19 years old. And there she was on TV, just... I don't want to say she didn't earn it, but yeah, she was getting out there, and they're they're rigged, by the way. Reality TV shows are not reality. If no, you didn't know true. that already, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Well, la- <laughs> just if you, you want to look hey, it up, y'all watch this. <laughs> look uh, look up uh, Last Comic Standing on Wikipedia, and you might be able to find videos of it. But season two, uh, Brett Butler again and Drew Carey were incensed. She they both wrote long pieces on their website because they they were the judges for season two of Last Comic Standing, the the pre rounds, and they picked the original and funny comics they liked. And then NBC said, Yeah, but these are the guys we want for the house and scrapped everything and put in the people that had managers and agents and everyone they wanted. And Drew and Brett were like, You used us, you put our and well actually Drew was he's like, you know what, we got used the hell with it. You know, I don't care. But uh but yeah, it's 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 not an honest competition. It's very behind the scenes who who they think they want to be in this TV show or who has this. You know. Did you final question? Yeah. Yeah, I have one more. Um, so and this, I don't know if this limits you or not, but in terms of like, if I go see a music artist, a concert for his tour, if I go see the show in Charlotte, it's going to be the same as in Atlanta. Like, how much new material do you do from show to show, or do you have like a routine that you stick to for like a tour? How does that work? Well, I, I did, uh, like I said, Wednesday, uh, we found out that a couple of people didn't like my act, and I think it's my job to make everyone happy. So I told them, like, uh, Wednesday night, I said, you know what, tomorrow, Thursday, I'm going to come in and do my act back to front. So I just completely flipped it. And it worked a lot better Thursday. I, everybody seemed to enjoy it tonight, correct? So that's what I've been doing is leading, just and in other clubs, I'll just, like, over the course of five shows, start in the middle of my act or just randomly but yeah it's sometimes the jokes are the same it's just you're going to hear them in a completely different odd order just so that i'm not here is joke number one i am tired of my act so we can mix it up yeah and to to answer your question on that um penn and teller you know who penn and teller are oh yes yes good and they're in vegas they've been there for over 25 years now and uh, they do rotate things in and out of their show over the last 25 years. But their show, if you go to it 15 years ago and you go to it today, same show. 
And the reason is because they uh, claim that you, they've been doing it so long and everything is down every step and everything they say and every move. And when they see an audience member up here, they know exactly what the audience is going to do at every moment, even with different audiences. And, uh, and, and I like that because it, it's good. It makes a really good show. And people come back for it. Now, and, and I, I did the stage comedy hypnosis for 23 years. And that was, it was more improv than anything else because I, the first seven minutes were scripted because I gave my introduction. I did a uh, induction to get the people up on stage and then had them, you know, go out. And then after that, everything, I knew how to, like, certain things I wanted to do with them, like, uh, you know, collect like a chicken, that kind of stuff. I never did that, but something like that. And uh, so I would have it, but it was different because you never knew what they were going to do on stage. Um, so when I started this show that I have now, the Mentalism Show, it's a little bit different. Everything I do is scripted. The whole 90 minutes is scripted. And so I know what I'm, I know how the person's going to react in the audience, no matter who's sitting out there. I know how they're going to react. I know how the audience as a whole is going to react. I know when people are on stage, what, where I need them to stand, and everything is, uh, is uh, produced and scripted. And which, you know, a lot of, and, and the same with comics. There's a lot of comics that are scripted. But, yeah, a lot. Yeah. My, my wife uh, said her bubble was burst. She went to see a comic. I don't remember his name. And the next year he came back. This was before we were dating or married. And she said, oh, we got to go see him. It's great. And it was the exact same act. She was kind of disappointed because she said, you know, the, the, the little asides like, oh, you do this. And then his comic, she's like, I thought it was all off the top of his head, but it was all scripted. And it sort of, but it's a different act that's comedy. It's yeah. not, you know. You're and it has to look new every yeah, night, it even though it's new. scripted. Now, even though mine is scripted. It's just things change during the show because we'll get somebody that wants to talk or somebody that wants to ask a question, um, and I know how to respond to them, and I have scripts that for the response. Like somebody says, somebody raises their hand, and, and, and they're like asking a question. I'll say, oh, that's cute. You think you're at a, a college lecture. I said, you're actually at a show, Let me, and, and, and we'll play around with them. So I know things, but sometimes things come up that just crop up. And, um, but to answer your question, though, it is scripted, and every night... But it changes. I have repeat business a lot because it's always going to be a new first kiss. It's always going to be a new animal. It's going to be a new bucket list. It's going to be an, a new uh, card. Um, and, and people will come back to see if you get it wrong. Yes, like and people they, they will want. bring friends back and say, I want you to call my friend up because I want to know who her yeah. first kiss was. So they will bring friends back like that. So, But I do rotate things in. There's different routines that I think, ah, I want to try this. We'll put them in and try it out for like three days. And if it doesn't work, we'll take it out, or maybe we need to tweak it and put it back in. And then that means, though, I still want to stick to the 90-minute show, so I have to take something out to leave that in. So all of them, the stuff, things that I do, and uh, this is probably way too much to answer, uh, that too much of an answer that you wanted, are closers. And what I mean by that is, you know, a musician will do like a song at the end that he knows will get people to their feet and stuff. Everything in my show is a closer. So they're all things designed to do that. And if I take something out, it has to be better than what I'm taking out or I'm not taking it out. So it's a – sound good? Uh, just off what you said, it's funny because every audience will react differently to every joke. Like, man, some one night a joke will get an applause break and the next night the same joke will just sit there. And it's like, how? It's the same joke. And that's just the way it goes. Yeah. But we keep doing it. Yeah. And we keep getting paid for it. Hopefully. And there's probably people that you've known when you first started that you left behind that got out of the business and you just stuck to it. There, there's a, that just sparked several thoughts. Like, yeah, because you say it takes persistence and maybe they didn't keep going. And there, when I started, there were a couple of guys I really liked that I thought was funny. And they're like, oh, I'm hanging it up now. I met a girl and we got kids. And I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with you. And now that I'm married and have kids, I'm, I'm, I just, I don't have one foot out the door, but I get it. I get it now. I get the wanting to be home and watching your kids grow up. Yeah. So I don't know. All right. Well, thanks, Nathan. Uh, oh, oh, wait. We, we, how do people get a hold of you if they want to get a hold of you? Uh, it's NathanTimmel.com. It's very simple. That's very simple. NathanTimmel.com. So they can you stalk you? and contact page on there. Uh, I'm, I'm the only Nathan Timmel. Like, you Google Nathan Timmel, and I am the only response. There are pages of me. It's not like you Google, uh, you know, Steve Johnson, and there are like 20 million different ones. I am the only Nathan Timmel, apparently. Or if there's another one, he is not easy to find because... My name, you put it in Google, and you got my Twitter, my Facebook, my website. It's all me, pictures of me, so I'm very easy to find. All right, well, thanks. Thanks. It was Thank you for having me. Good time, me. and the first time in front of an audience, and thank you guys.